So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I will present you a left behind occupant recognition in parked cars. And um, at the beginning, I will say some words at the others uh, to the motivation why is Delphi interested in the development of such a system. And then I present you two approaches we were considered to get the experimental data, which leads to the classification part. And yeah, then at the end, I will give you some results and the further work. So the motivation. Hyperthermia is uh, the second leading cause of death for children in non traffic <coughs> fatalities in the US. And hyperthermia is the heat stroke, so it's death by heat stroke. And it causes approximately 20% of death per year in the US. To give you an overview how fast a car can heat up, um, this slide shows a car at a normal ambient temperature of 80 degrees on a sunny day on a parking lot. And after one hour, we have 120 degrees Fahrenheit inside of the car. And this is, yeah, it's quite hot. For us, it's important to see that we have a in high increase. And after 10 minutes, we have 11 degrees centigrade. And this is around about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And this means we have the beginning of fever. The fast heat up time of the car and the um, yeah, the ability of children un under 14 years of age to control their body temperature is a problem that brought us to the idea to develop a left-behind occupant detection. For this, we considered several sensors and we evaluated them. I want to present you two of them. This first idea is acceleration measurement directly at the car body. Which for that, we have a rear sensing element, a mid and a front sensor. And the idea is to detect vibrations that are produced by occupants in the car to determine the occupancy status of the car. The second approach uses a serious sensing element. Um, it's produced for the US market since 2001. And we equipped 36 million cars all over the globe. It's called POTS, Passive Occupant Detection System. And mainly it consists of this silicon oil filled bladder mat, which is directly connected to a pressure sensor. And so we are able to, um, to gain the information of the loading force on the seat. So to, to, um, yeah, to disarm the, the airbag if there is a child seated on the seat. And the idea in this is to extract physiologic parameters to detect living individuals directly on the seat. And so we had to replace the ECU with our own electronics because heartbeat and respiration movement um, are to find in the AC parts of the signal, and this ECU only extracts information of the DC parts, so loading forces. Um, at the beginning of the acceleration measurements, we thought we can extract heartbeat or respiration, but we can't. But what we see is the human tremor, which is an unintentional rhythmic oscillating muscle movement, and it's present in every person. Every human being has this, provides this signal and cannot suppress it by itself. And we are able to detect that at the car chassis. This is the signal from the car chassis, as an example. But we are not able to, to do or to, to apply only a threshold system because we have several frequencies to consider, observed range up to 15 hertz. And most important is that multiple peaks are possible. The signal amplitude and the center frequency change from person to person and also depends on the daily condition of the person. The next slide shows low signal sources. In this application, that means um, human beings with less muscle, move, muscle mass. And these are three kids at the back seat. Very good signal to detect. One child at the back seat, also no problem. And still a baby, which is awake and seated in the child seat at the back seat, is detectable. If this baby falls asleep, we have very low signals, which sometimes can lead to a temporary signal loss so that we have to compensate that with a confidence filter or a confidence decision. Um, other problems or disturbances we considered were external disturbances like wind, music, or passing traffic. And the most critical ones is the passing traffic, as you can see on this slide. Um, this is the empty case. And very similar to the occupied case, the signal in the observed frequency range is produced. Um, we 
did a lot of testing. We expected a second sending element, but the easiest way is to make a short Fourier transform or wavelet transform and have a time resolution added to the frequency resolution. As you can see, that is the data from the previous slide. The cars in the empty case or the heavy passing traffic produces peaks in the observed frequency range, but they are very sharp in time. And on the other hand, you see the Occupy case, where the occupant produces a time type stable seek, uh, signal at round about five hertz. And this over the whole measurement period. So that is the, 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 the possibility for us to separate between these two states. Um, the other one is the pressure met I mentioned pre previously. You can see we extract the, the respiration movement with one filter and we can extract the frequency or the, the, the breath per minute. And we extract this heartbeat or pulse signal, which provides us the information of the pulse or the heartbeat BPMs. And, but not directly. We have to extract it over the envelope function to get this information. So the facts of, of the two sending elements. We can detect a tremor directly at the car chassis. We have a frequency range up to 15 hertz. We have to expect number, uh, several number of peaks, changing magnitude, changing center frequency from person to person. Um, the second sensing element is able to see the respiration rate over here and also the heartbeat rate. Out of this, uh, we considered a feature extraction because we sample around about 10 seconds and 1,024 samples a second, so we have 10,240 samples each channel, and we have a front, a mid, and a rear sensor. And in this car, also the respiration and the heartbeat, so we have five sensing <coughs> channels to consider, and we extracted 196 features per measurement. Also, there is redundant information and useless information, so a correlation-based feature selection took place, which considers a strong feature class correlation and a weak feature-to-feature -feature correlation, and then we get a high merit where we can rank these several features. Out of this, we gain 22 features for the classification space, and based on this data, we rank different classifiers. I want to present you three of them. One is the KNN, called K nearest neighborhood. This is a majority decision. Then we have a multi-threshold system. This is um, represented by the decision tree, and we have a separating hyperplane, this is the support vector machine, which is more theoretical. After we rank this in a cross-validation, which is a common way to do that, we uh, gained this ranking. First is the acceleration data, you can see, and then the bladder, and we also use the combined mode. And what you can see is we gain 90% accuracy of every classifier from the, from these three tested ones. But the Port Vector Machine and Kenyers Neighborhood are the winners because they have very similar results. And we decided to take the KNN because it's easy to implement. You have no, um, no training phase, so we, we expect low system requirements at the moment. Yes, um, so the results. We're able to see the occupancy state of a car by accelerometers at the car chassis. We extract the information of a tremor, the human tremor. We have to compensate the temporary signal loss of sleeping infants by using a confidence decision or a second measurement. We took the confidence decision. And external disturbances, the most critical ones are by passing traffic, heavy passing traffic direct to the parked car. And we compensate it by doing wave flare or STFT transformation. The bladder in the seat is able to see the seat's occupancy and also the physiological parameters of the occupant on the seat, like heartbeat and respiration. And in this classification part, we, we saw that the KNN is the, the best compromise for our application. So last slide is further work. So both of them will be considered in the future. The acceleration measurements are considered for left behind occupant detection. We want to implement that in an embedded design. We want to go to a single sensor design and 
we also want this directly connected to candle Lin to do, provide this information to the body computer of the car. The bladder um, is considered for the monitoring of the health state because there are two challenges. We, we cannot detect persons that are not seated on the seat or a seat that is not equipped with this bladder, cannot see anything. And the other, other thing is we cannot detect through a child seat. If there is a child seated in a child seat, we're not able to extract this information. But we will see a future in, in the observation of the health state of the driver. So at the moment, we're doing tests under driving conditions, how we can extract this information and, yeah, and, and react if there is any problem to the health of the driver. So thank you for your attention, and feel free to ask questions. <coughs>